A roll call vote uh, to confirm a quorum. Council Member Abdel Gawad. Here. Council Member Boehner. Present. Council Member Hubach. Present. Council Member Westcote. Present. Council Member Moorhead. Present. Council Member Stevens. Present. Council Member Pifo. Present. Mayor Kirkhoff absent. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, did you call up uh, Council Member Kellogg? Council Member Kellogg. Present. Thank you. Uh, we have a quorum. Will everyone rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we come to presentations and awards. Is our that's Ken Pearson, our city auditor. Yes, sir. If I could ask uh, Mr. Pearson from our auditor, Dana F. Cole and company, to present the uh, 2013 financial statements. Well, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here again uh, presenting the audit. This is for the fiscal year ending October 31st, 2013. And uh, go over a couple new items that you'll see when you look through that audit package there. Uh, one thing is that the federal expenditures of the city this year were less than that threshold amount. And so a, a single audit on those federal award programs was not needed to be conducted. And so all of those schedules and reports, if you look and compare it to the prior year, you'll see that those aren't in here. And that's the reason for that. It just wasn't a necessary action for this year. Uh, in addition, there were some new auditing standards that are applicable with this year's um, audit. And what that did is it required us to present certain debt transactions a little differently than what we've had to do in the, in the past. You'll see this year that there's some new categories on the statement of net position, and it's called deferred inflows, deferred outflows. And then there's one other item that relates to the bond issue costs. And one of the new auditing standards requires us to, to expense those in the years that that transaction has occurred. Well, in the past, we've capitalized those and so what that requires us to do is to restate those beginning balances. And there is a note disclosure in the footnotes that reflects that in there. So you should be able to tie all of that together as you look through that. Just to go over the summary of the audit results here, uh, the, the audit package, it is prepared as a comprehensive annual financial report. It's commonly referred to as a CAFR. And this also gets sent into the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada for a review process. And for the past year, we've included the Certificate of Award of Achievement for financial reporting that the city did receive. And you'll see that on page seven. Uh, I would expect that this, uh, this audited package would also achieve that same certificate award. And uh, so far, this is the third straight year that the city has received that award. So that's that's a very uh, good sign for the staff in the city as a, as a whole there. Overall, the audit went extremely well this year. Uh, we had very, very few journal entries. City staff made all of the entries except for the ones relating to the debt refinancing that you had this past fiscal year. And uh, other than that, everything was really tied out and, and very well organized. And so. Uh, I thank the staff greatly for all of their assistance and all of our requests and getting all that documentation to us. With our audit, the most important part is the auditor's report, and that's where we provide our opinion. And you'll, as you read through that, you'll see that we've provided an unmodified opinion, which means that the financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects. And we also have a report on compliance with laws, regulations, and grant agreements. And in there, we don't disclose any items of non-compliance. There's one additional report that we include, and that's on the internal controls of the city. And that's towards the back, back section. And as you read that, you'll see that we do have one item that we report on in there. It's one that we've had in prior years. And what it is is it's uh, the reliance on, on us as auditors to draft these financial statements and the note disclosures. Uh, it takes a lot of time, a lot of expertise, and, and it's not uncommon for a city this size to have that kind of report in there. As you read through this, probably the, the most important part that you can look at is the management discussion and analysis. What that does is it gives you a summarized view, but it also gives you comparative tables 
so you can see directly what last year looked like and what this year looked like. And then there's also some narratives in there that help you further understand the financial statements. So that's kind of the summary that I've got there for you. Um, again, I'd, I'd uh, like to thank the city, the city staff. Uh, once again, they did a great job. And if I can address any questions for you, I can. Or if any come up at a later time, feel free to contact me at that time. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions? Thank right, you for thank your presentation. You all very much. Uh, seeing no personal appearances, we'll go ahead and move on to staff reports. Uh, Mr. Boleyn. Uh, thanks, sir. I'll call on the Public Works Director, Mike Kraft. Thank you, uh, Mr. Boleyn, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, members of Council. I've submitted my written report uh, to you for your review, and in addition, we will be opening bids for the fiscal year 2014 curb project this week. Uh, with that, I'm available for any questions. Are there any questions? Thank you. And that concludes staff reports, sir. We'll go ahead and move on to committee reports. And I have two for the Economic Development uh, Department. We have an upcoming ribbon cutting on uh, Thursday, uh, February 27th. We have Minsky's Pizza at 812 West Foxwood Drive. That will be at 11.30. And then on uh, March, March 13th, we have Golden Corral, and they will be having their ribbon cutting at 11.30 as well. So please join us for those events. Uh, I will entertain a motion to dispose of the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve the consent agenda, including item A, City Council Minutes, February 10th, 2014, and item B, approval of the Safety Traffic Enforcement Program. Second. The item's been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, passes unanimously. We'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, Ms. Hill, may we have a second reading of Bill 2939 by title only, please. Second reading of Bill 2939 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with SFS Architecture for services in providing a feasibility study of a potential community slash civic center in the total amount of $70,000 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. I will entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 2939. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 2939, award of contract for the community slash civic center feasibility study. Second. The item has been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, Council Member Moorhead. Uh, this is just a small comment. I just want to, I noticed that the applicant or the contractors in the uh, in the room here today and with all the discussions that we've had over all these meetings I just want to um, welcome and glad this is wrapping up tonight and look forward to working with you so okay. uh, council member Hubach I just have a concern because I still feel that this should come from the general fund rather than from the park fund for the financing of it. So that's why I will be voting no. Is there any other discussion? Okay, so this item is motion and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, the motion passes seven to one. Ms. Hill, maybe we have the second reading of Bill 2940 by title only. Second reading of Bill 2940 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending Chapter 545, Property Maintenance Code of the Raymore City Code. Uh, thank you. I will entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 2940. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 2940, Property Maintenance Code Amendment. Second. That has been uh, motion and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, seeing no discussion, all those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, passes seven to one. Uh, Ms. Hill, may we have a, a second reading of Bill 2937 by title only, please? 
The second reading of Bill 2937 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with HDR Engineering, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $48,875 for the Owen Good Force Main Odor Control Design, City Project Number 14-183-301. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 2937. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 2937, award of contract for the Owen Good Lift Station odor control design. Second. The item has been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, Council Member Moorhead. Uh, this is somewhat consistent with what I stated at the last meeting. Um, you know, one of the concerns that we had with this when we, we had a work session on this is this is a, a new type of system, this ECO2 system. Um, there's, there really has not been um, uh, a lot of history on this. Uh, you know, looking at the company this last week, you know, they formed in 2000. Uh, they, I, I only can tell of four instances, actually nationwide, they put this in. It's fairly proprietary. We don't really know exactly what's contained in this system. The, the concern that I have, uh, just want to vocalize, is on this step of the project, which I had posed questions to Public Works, but actually um, better understood the responses I got when I looked at the, the company to realize there were certain things that the company does not provide to the contractor and, and that it requires this type of step. But I, I do have to say, um, looking at the, the scope of services, th this is far more what I would call customer service oriented than engineering. Um, I'm very concerned with the kind of money that we're sinking into this. We only had one total bid. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if staff actually had a chance to contact the four other cities that put these in to find out who they used and what kind of costs were involved, but I mean, we haven't even bought the, pro the product itself, and we're going to have to pay another contractor to come in to actually install it. Um, to me, I just, uh, this is a very generous $48,000 for uh, uh, something that, uh, uh, politely put, uh, I think, uh, well, I don't want to be glib, but uh, um, it's a very generous contract for this contractor. I've decided as an attorney I need a side business to contract with municipalities because uh, uh, this is exceedingly generous for the five tasks that are being going to be offered. Any other discussion? Council Member Hubach. I just wanted to know what we would do if we don't sign up for this, how will we handle the odor problem and the corrosion of the pipes? I have a, a question for staff. Um, is there any guarantee, uh, because this is a relatively new product on the market, is there a guarantee by the contractor or the engineer or the, the firm that's providing the product that it's going to absolutely fix our problem? We will include performance standards to make sure that our the levels of uh, the reduction in the H2 uh, the hydrogen sulfide is what we expect based on performance that we've seen from other uh, installations at various locations. Although few, there are the ones that I've looked at are very similar to our situation with regards to length of force main, contact time in the force main, or detention time in the force main, and levels of hydrogen sulfide. Um, I think we, there's a, definitely, this will work for us. W would we get the same kind of results if we just flushed fresh water down our, our sewer? It was, my, it was my understanding, the reason we have the, the, the gas problem, the hydrogen sulfide problem, is that we're not using our main to the capacity in which it was designed for. Right, but adding fresh water down the main, everything that goes through that main is metered, and you really don't want to. Okay. be putting additional excess water through the main because you pay for treating for that. Okay. Are there any, any, other, any other discussion? Uh, the item has been uh, seconded. Uh, motion and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, five to three, motion passes.
May we have the second reading of Bill 2938 by title only, please. The second reading of Bill 2938 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Mid-America Regional Council for the acquisition of orthophotography for the City of Raymore, Missouri. I will entertain a motion to dispose of Bill 2938. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 2938, uh, Mark Aerial Photography Project. Second. The item has been motioned and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? A measure passes unanimously. That finishes old business. We'll move on to new business. Ms. Hill, may we have the first reading of Resolution 1414 by title only, please. The reading of Resolution 1414, a resolution of the Raymore City Council approving the extension of the preliminary plat for Raymore Galleria North located in the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter of Section 8, Township 46 North, Range 32 West, all in Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. May we have a staff report, please? Thank you, sir. I'll call on the Community De Development Director, Jim Cataret. Thank you. North 58 Equity Partners, LLC, is the uh, current owner of the undeveloped land within the Raymore Galleria North subdivision and the Raymore Gallery North subdivision currently includes two developed lots, which would be the uh, Belfonte car wash and the Firestone facility. And then there are five undeveloped lots, a little bit of land to the uh, east of Belfonte and then land to the north. The uh, preliminary plat for this subdivision was approved back in 2010 with the most recent final plat application approved in <coughs> February of, of 2012. Since this is a phase subdivision, they do have to submit a final plat every two years. Uh, thus, the, uh, since it's been two years since the last final plat application, they either need to request an extension of the preliminary plat or file an additional final plat. So they did submit a request for an extension to the preliminary plat, which is, which is before you this evening. Uh, as requested uh, from the council, staff did provide an illustration of the uh, what would be the uh, potential impacts of the stream buffer uh, ordinance on the undeveloped lands. That illustration was included in your staff report. I do want to note that uh, there is no FEMA floodplain uh, identified on this subject property. Uh, city staff does recommend a one-year extension uh, for this preliminary plat, and if the recommendation is filed, then the new expiration date of the preliminary plat would be February 13 of 2015. I do want to note that a uh, representative is here tonight, uh, Ruben Pate, if you have any questions of the applicant. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Seeing no questions, I will entertain a motion to dispose of Resolution 1414. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Resolution 1414, the preliminary plat extension for the Raymore Galleria North. Second. Uh, just a point of order, do we need to specify whether it's a one year or a two year or is it just the resolution written as one year? The resolution states it's one year, right. so you should Thank be fine. Uh, the item has been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? The item passes unanimously. My computer's working slow. Yes, they are. Okay, uh, Ms. Helmig, we have the first reading of Resolution 1412 by title only, please. The reading of Resolution 1412 by title only. A resolution of the Raymore City Council approving a design concept for sidewalk improvements for the fiscal year 2014 sidewalk program. Uh, may we have a step, uh, hang on. We're having technical issues up here. Is there something we can do, sir? Well, it, it's just responding slowly. Um, as this item is a, uh, requires a public hearing, I will open the public hearing by asking for a staff report. Uh, thank you, sir. I'll call on the Public Works Director, Mike Krauss. Thank you, uh, Ms. Berlin. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council, what we staff is seeking uh, this evening is approval of the design concept for the fiscal year 2014 sidewalk project. Um, on November 12th of 2013, City Council approved a resolution defining the 
2014 to 2018 sidewalk program. Uh, the sidewalks identified for construction this year are along Ridgeway Drive, Pleasant Drive, Aspen Drive, uh, South Monroe Street, South Harrison Avenue, and South Franklin. Uh, when we, uh, all of the sidewalks will be constructed within city right-of-way. There is no additional right-of-way needed for, uh, for this year's project. Uh, there may be a need for some temporary easements, but those will be addressed on a case-by-case on a -case basis. Uh, I have a brief PowerPoint to kind of run through some of the, some of the uh, decisions we make when we're looking at sidewalks. What's shown here is a typical sidewalk sit, uh, installation. Uh, we like to maintain a separation from the sidewalk from the curb that allows some separation for traffic, allows some, uh, because we are ad adding additional impervious area, it allows some, a drainage area so to limit the runoff from the sidewalk. As I said, this is a map of our overall sidewalk program that was adopted uh, this year. One of the segments that is on Ridgeway and Pleasant Drive. We are recommending that the sidewalk be constructed on the south side of Ridgeway Drive and on the east and north side of Pleasant Drive. The opposite sides of the street have uh, mailbox conflicts and, and slopes conflicts, which we are trying to, to avoid. The uh, selected sides along here are relatively relatively flat, and it's going to be an easy fit to fit the sidewalks in there. As we said, there's the, the areas are relatively flat. We are able to maintain a four, the four-foot sidewalk with a grass parkway. There's no major landscape or tree conflicts, and it allows us to tie in with easily with the existing sidewalks. The next segment that is, uh, next area we're gonna be working on is in, in Maplewood. I would note that uh, previously we had looked at installing sidewalk along South Adams Street and Jefferson Street. Uh, Adams Street was programmed for next year. Uh, due, based on our engineering estimates, we're not gonna be able to complete this, the segment along Jefferson Street this year. The same, same situation exists here along the um, side opposite sides of the street from where we are selecting there are mailboxes and steep slopes and it's really an easier transition for us to install the sidewalks on the other other side of the street along aspen drive there is a ditch that runs along the west side of the street the along the opposite side of the street adjacent cemetery that there's adequate right away for us to be separated away from the ditch line to be able to install the sidewalk and the selected sides are, as we said, are, are flat. There's limited mailbox, conf there are no mailbox conflicts. We're able to maintain a separation. There's really no major landscape or tree conflicts. And that concludes our presentation. I'm available for questions. Are there any questions for staff? Seeing as there's no questions for staff, I'll go ahead and open it up the floor to public comment. Um, if you'd come forward and state your name for the record and keep your response to under five minutes, please. Is there a way to get rid of the presentation? Mr. Mayor, would he use the microphone? Oh, is, is, is your microphone on? Yeah. We chose to come tonight to ask questions to the engineering department. Uh, we are in favor of all the improvements in the area. However, we have a few concerns. Um, we have a fence that we put in in 1987 on the uh, Harrison uh, Street uh, joining South Monroe. And um, uh, I just, I, I assumed somebody would contact me if that was in the way or if my easement that I allowed in 1987 is adequate for, for now. Um, I didn't know if that information would be supplied tonight or if I should contact somebody specifically for that or just wait until somebody contacts me. Mr. Kress. I, I think for, for um, specific property, questions like yours, the easiest thing to do is contact my project manager, Lori Crandall, 
and you can reach her at, at 33, and I think it was listed on the bottom of the public hearing notice, but you can reach her at 331-1852. Okay. Lori would be happy to come out and meet with you at your convenience and discuss, or, or with anyone, to discuss individual property con okay. uh, issues. All right, and that probably will answer my next question. I just wanted to know if there was any regulations on disturbing the sidewalk once it's installed if we decide to widen our driveway because that's been on our plans uh, for the last couple of years and uh, we're not going to make it probably make that happen before you put the sidewalk in I wanted to know what type of regulations there were for a resident to uh, take out part of the sidewalk to widen our our driveway and approach would simply require a right-of-way permit for work just permit right okay and then I just wanted to know if there was any additional plans for road improvements for that area Maplewood seems to be kind of the uh, forgotten part of Raymore since of all the newer additions have been established and our streets are um, especially South Harrison uh, where the curb and the street meet there's uh, during the summertime, a lot of grass and, and weeds that grow along that area. And I thought if we were making improvements by adding sidewalks, I was just hoping that there was gonna be some improvements in the streets. Um, uh, another, another improvement that we have been waiting for, um, and it may happen if you put the sidewalk along Aspen, uh, if that's gonna change the drainage in the ditch along there, that might help the problem that we're having on Harrison and Monroe, which is all around my lot since I'm on that corner lot. Um, it seems like the overflow of that ditch up on Aspen runs through the, the yards of the houses between Aspen and Harrison and then ends up on Harrison and then runs down Harrison and then down Monroe in front of our house. Uh, quite a bit of water and drainage along there because of the uh, lack of drainage or improved drainage on Aspen. And I was just wondering if they were going to improve the, the ditch and drainage along Aspen when they did the sidewalk. And Mr. Crass, if you would make notes of that and have a member of your staff uh, reach out and okay. get those questions answered. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, state your name and address uh, for the record. Uh, Thomas Meyer. I live on 501 Aspen. Uh, the sidewalk goes across the front of my house, majority of my property, all the way to the cemetery. I have four big trees in front of the house, and that's my main concern. I don't know if there's enough room for a sidewalk between the street. We have no curbs. All we have is ditches. So... Uh, I'm just wondering about the trees, if there's going to be a problem with my trees, because they're big ones, and they protect my house from the sun in the summer. Absolutely. Uh, were there any c conflicts with? Not that I'm aware of, but I will, I'll have Lori contact you. She'll be happy to come out. And okay, because from the edge of the roadway to the, the base of the tree is 19 foot is the closest tree. Oh, that, there's plenty of room. We'll, we'll, we're going to probably be a foot or so off the top of the ditch. Second question I have is uh, they put a sidewalk in beside the house from, uh, to extend from Elm so the kids could get from the school. Mm -hmm. uh, they said they were going to put lights up. They never have. So it's been several years, and we still have no lights, and there's people that walk up and down that sidewalk at night. Mr. So Berlin, that's would, my would, other concern. Would you add that to the KCPNL list of things to, come, to have <laughs> yes, a conversation sir, I, about? Yes, sir. I will do that. We'll see if we can. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward and, and make a statement? All right. Seeing no one else come forward, I will close the public uh, comment section. And we will uh, move on, and I will entertain a motion to dispose of uh, Resolution 1412. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Resolution 1412, Establishment of the 2014 Sidewalk Construction Program. Second. The item has been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? The measure passes unanimously.
Ms. Hill, may we have the first reading of Resolution 1413 by title only. The reading of Resolution 1413 by title only. A resolution of the Raymore City Council declaring the intent to annex right-of-way of Hubach Hill Road into the corporate limits of the city of Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. May we have a staff report, please? Yes, sir, thank you. At its January 6, uh, 2014 work session, uh, the council expressed a desire for city staff to begin the process of exploring annexation of those areas of Hubach Hill Road that are currently shared with Cass County. Uh, in your packet, you have a map, and the segment identified on the attached map as uh, segment one has historically been maintained by the city, uh, including extensive pavement work. Uh, the segment identified as segment two on the attached map, map, which is shared with Keth County, has not historically been maintained by the city, uh, but it is shared with the county. <coughs> uh, the resolution in your packet expresses the city's intent to annex those two segments of Hubach Hill Road, and in order for that annexation to occur, it is necessary to obtain a petition for voluntary annexation of the road right of way from the Cass County Commission. So as we have done this a couple of times before when we've annexed road right of way, we actually have to get a petition from another authority. And so the, a procedure has been developed, uh, uh, which is laid out in the uh, agenda item memo in your packet. Uh, seven different steps are, are indicated. Uh, so we do uh, would intend to pursue those steps if the council wants to begin the process tonight of annexing those road segments. Uh, so upon council's uh, approval of resolution 1413, staff would commence notification of adjacent property owners and schedule a public hearing to solicit comments about the proposed annexation. Uh, and then uh, once we've received those public comments, we would then appear before the Cass County Commission to request that they submit a voluntary annexation petition and then we would follow the uh, steps that are laid out on page 138 of your council e-packet. So the resolution before Unite will begin that process. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Uh, I, I have one. Do we maintain the road now. Do we also uh, plow and uh, remove the snow from those that road section of roadway? Well, again, there are two different segments. So segment one, yes. Segment two, to some degree, we plow, but we haven't really done much of anything else. But we, we in order to sort of get that segment on the westbound segment, we also kind of hit the eastbound segment and then make a turnaround. So to some degree, we, we do uh, plow snow, but that's about the only maintenance we perform on, on the second segment that's laid out in your map. All right, thank you. Are there any other? Council Member Hubach. Yes, I, this question, I guess, is for the um, uh, attorney. Wh when we uh, annex this, does, is that going to make it harder or easier for us to annex the, un the unincorporated areas should we decide to do so later on? How will that affect us? Because the street will be annexed and the property underneath here, back here will not be annexed. If they want to change anything, do they have to check it out with us since we, we control the road and the access then? They cannot put any, say, uh, a subdivision in there with new road access without uh, getting our approval? Am I understanding it right? My answer would be that it will not adversely affect, it won't necessarily make it easier in absence of their cooperation, but it won't, it certainly won't hurt. It would lay a foundation for it if they select or choose to come along later. I assume you're talking about the land to the, I think it's to the south, is that correct? Because we annexed to the north already, correct? So it won't adversely affect it. It would lay the foundation for a possibility of future annexation, but it won't require them to come in, but it would have the, it would be our road there. Yeah. Any other questions? Council Member Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Question for staff, probably Eric. Um, and I'm looking at the map. Mine is tilted counterclockwise 90 degrees. Um, looking up here, right below where it says West Hubach Road, where the city limit kind of comes in and goes back out. Um, do we take care of the, that West Hubach Hill Road there that, that is not what I shows the city limit from uh, the one dotted line on the... It should be around Dutchman Acres. Is, is that around Dutchman Acres? I, I believe so. I, My I question is, do we, do we take care of that full length of uh, North Cass Parkway? 
as far as for plowing and maintenance? Yeah, I, we take, it's kind of hard to describe in the map, but the looking at where it, the, the west HUB that you're talking about, that mm -hmm. is that b both the north and the southern part of that road are in the city. The city annexed both sides of the right of way a few years ago. Okay. So we do maintain that entire section of road bay. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? Uh, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to dispose of resolution 1413. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve resolution 1413, annexation of Hubach Hill Road right of way. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? A measure passes unanimously. Uh, we will move on uh, to our next item. Uh, Ms. Hill, may we have a first reading of Bill 2941 by title only, please? First reading of Bill 2941 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with MotionLink, Inc. for the purpose of global positioning system devices and tracking software for Raymore fleet vehicles in a first year amount not to exceed $17,588. May we have a staff report, please? Thank you, sir. I'll call on the Assistant City Manager, Jim Fearborn. Thank you, sir. The fiscal year 2014 budget includes funding to purchase global positioning system devices, GPS devices, and place them in all city fleet vehicles. The amount budgeted for this project for 2014 was $19,600. During last year's heavy snow events in, in the spring of 2013, it became apparent to staff that there was a need to be able to share real-time snow removal progress both between city departments and with the public at large. Staff investigated a number of processes to achieve this end and concluded that the installation of GPS devices in the snow removal equipment would fulfill this need. At the same time, during discussions leading up to including this project in the 2014 budget, it was realized that there would be a number of additional benefits to installing these same devices in all city fleet vehicles. Some of those would include operational efficiencies associated with being able to track vehicle routing, improve decision making in our snow removal operations, especially enhance safety and security of our personnel that are in the vehicles, and the vehicles themselves with immediate supervisor notifications, containment of fuel costs, containment of maintenance costs through routine maintenance alerts, and reduction in insurance claims that we receive by being able to track actual location of the vehicles at specific times, as well as vehicle operating milestones such as speed and direction. In accordance with City of Raymore purchasing policy, staff prepared a request for proposal and distributed it to the qualified equipment and software vendors for this type of system. A total of 10 responses to the RFP were received and the evaluation committee reviewed all of the proposals received and narrowed down the firms for final consideration to two. Following review of the devices and software package offered by these shortlisted firms, it was determined that MotionLink Incorporated provided the best overall platform for this project. Following, uh, based on the lowest price, quality of the devices, services delivered regarding the software, the ability to provide a city website platform for public tracking of the snow vehicles, and ongoing subscription service delivery, staff would recommend award of the contract to MotionLink Incorporated. This concludes staff report, sir. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Uh, Council Member Stevens. Being there for putting these devices in, is somebody going to monitor them? I mean, surely, how does that happen? In essence, the, the device itself is, is probably about that big, and it plugs into the electronic portion just below the dashboard. At any given time, any vehicle that has one of those plugged into it can be brought up on either a supervisor screen, if if certain parameters are exceeded, speed of the vehicle, uh, the vehicle leaves a geofencing area during a time that it shouldn't be, or 3 a.m. in the morning, somebody suddenly, a public works truck is driven off of the public works grounds, 
you receive immediate real-time alerts. Does this also work on mobile devices? It does indeed. Okay. Are there other questions? Uh, Council Member Delgawad. Just a quick question and just clarification, I think. Um, you mentioned that city staff and the public might be able to track vehicles. That's correct. It, the, the genesis of this project started with the two very heavy snow events that we had last year. And there are other cities in the area, Olathe, um, I believe Liberty. You can actually go onto their city website and track in real time where the snow plows are going. So you can see where, not only where they're going, but where they've been. So you can look at snow plow A and see its entire track and the direction that it is taken throughout the day. Uh, it's updated every five minutes, but it shows you the geo tracking. I think it's every two minutes within there. So you actually see the direction of the vehicle, where they've plowed, and you can tell where they're going. It also helps staff. If somebody calls and we have an emergency, which we often have, where a police car needs to get into a particular area that hasn't been plowed yet, we can, shortest time, make the decision on which plow to get over there. Does our, city web, oh, does our city website have the capability to uh, allow that feature to show the real time? Uh, that's one of the items that's contained within the price from Motion Link that the, that the second bidder did not have as clean. That there were going to have to be some interruptions. It didn't, we actually were sent to another link. In this case, it will actually be on our website. Council Member Abdelgawad. But certainly we get to choose which vehicles the public can track. Absolutely. <laughs> I was just going to make the comment that, you know, for, for some of us, you know, it, it would be probably handy to know where those police cars are. Uh, <laughs> but, but I'm sure that that's just, you know, you know everybody watching at one? home and, and all the teenagers, <laughs> you're not so fortunate. So are there any other questions? Council Member Boehner. Are there any annual operating costs associated with this? Yes, um, within, on the back page of your, your packet where we describe the two lowest bidders, the, the first year is purchase and subscription price. And then in ongoing years, not a guaranteed price, except motion link in the second and third year, the 12,054 subscription and maintenance costs and then they've guaranteed that for two years. GoTrack had only guaranteed their price for one year following. Are there any other questions? Okay, I will undertake a motion to dispose of Bill 2941. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we approve Bill 2941, award of contract for GPS units. Second. The item has been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? measure passes unanimously. That finishes new business. We will now move on to uh, public comments. I will open the floor to public comments. If you would uh, like to speak, just come forward, identify yourself for the record, and please keep your comments to less than five minutes. Seeing no one come forward, I will now open the floor to uh, mayor and council communication, starting with my left with council member Hubach. I have nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you. Council Member Pifa? Uh, no comment. Council Member Moorhead? I'd just like to take a moment and uh, thank the representative from Dana Cole and the auditor. Um, I'd also like to point out that they can only do their job if our staff's doing a good job, which I wish to pass along compliment to Mr. Berlin and the other members that participated in that, hopefully that compliment will get passed down the line to all the participants. Um, very, very, uh, uh, not something that people normally have fun reading. It is actually very interesting and well put together. So thank you. Council Member Kellogg. No comment tonight. Council Member Abdelgawan. Thank you. No handy dandy Excel random I, I'm, not, I'm not that fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, first off, I want to thank the couple families that came in to, um, to ask questions and share about the sidewalk program. I think 
Um, that's a big part of helping our city government work the way it's supposed to work is getting feedback from the public. Next, even though we haven't officially had the ribbon cutting, I went to welcome Minsky's Pizza. I've talked to lots of people already who've been there, so I'm glad to see we have that new business in Raymore. And finally, Relay for Life is coming up in June, and I just wanted to share that they're having a kickoff open house meeting on March 10th from 6 to 8 at the Community Bank of Raymore. Um, this is a great meeting to go to if you're interested in learning about Relay for Life. You can get your team signed up as a team captain. Um, and if you're not able to make it that night, you can go to relayforlife.org slash raypecmo and get more information about Relay for Life. And thank you. Councilmember Banner. No comment. Councilmember Stevens. I just had a question. Uh, is, do we have any, are we having trouble with our servers or something? Everything below the summary is just doesn't exist. I'm sorry, so what, what is the problem? Everything below the summary, there's nothing there, just boxes. Below the summary? In, the view. in, in what we view oh. as far as our agenda and the, in the, uh, uh, the uh, e-packet, uh, we I'm, don't have anything so tonight. Sorry, well, I, I wasn't aware of that. I'm sorry. We will check into that as soon as the meeting's over. I apologize for any technical issues that we're having tonight. Thank you. Uh, I also want to remind everybody about the ribbon cutting for Minsky's Pizza, 1130 this Thursday on uh, February 27th. Uh, join us for uh, welcoming the new business and then you know, stay for lunch. And I think that's all I have. Uh, so I will entertain a motion to go into executive session uh, as authorized by RSMO 610.021 for litigation and for personnel matters as authorized by 610.021 subsection 3. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we go into executive session for personnel and litigation matters. Is there a second? Second. second. So, uh, item's been motioned and seconded. Uh, Ms. Hill, would you call roll call, please? Councilmember Abdelgawad? Yes. Councilmember Boehner? Yes. Councilmember Hubach? I'm sorry, I didn't get this. Are we talking about two going in for yes. two, yes. two issues? Then yes. Councilmember Kellogg? Yes. Councilmember Moorhead? Yes. Councilmember Pifo? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Westcote? Yes. Uh, we are adjourned to closed session, to the executive session. We will only return to open session to adjourn the meeting.